My name is uh, Marco Lisi. I work for the European Space Agency in the Directorate on Navigation and I am uh, working specifically on uh, the uh, Galileo project. Galileo is the uh, European Global Navigation Satellite System developed by the European Space Agency and funded and sponsored by the European Commission. I also support the uh, GSA, or so-called the GSA, that is the European GNSS Agency in Prague, that is the agency uh, created by the European Commission with the specific purpose to support the exploitation of services uh, through Galileo. Uh, today, my lecture is about uh, the technological future that we are facing in the next uh, few years uh, that, in my view, is based on uh, a, a big fusion of uh, three in three big areas. One is uh, that of ubiquitous localization through, for instance, uh, systems such as Galileo or GPS. The other is uh, the enormous expansion and ubiquitous expansion of sensing so not just uh, sensing from uh, Earth observation satellites, but sensing also from sensors that are going to be everywhere, also because of the Internet of Things revolution. And uh, finally, the big expansion of communications as foreseen by the uh, coming uh, future uh, 5G technology for mobile communications. So the, the three together, uh, are sort of creating a, a digital new world. And uh, we are also getting a, a new mapping, a new representation of the reality around us, and in fact, of our uh, complete planet. So the summary of my presentation is, uh, we are really at the beginning of the discovery of, new, of a new world. It's not a virtual one, because uh, it is real. In fact, it's a, a different way to represent and to uh, document our, uh, the reality around us. It's a sort of digital representation with, uh, in all its uh, minute uh, details, uh, of our physical world, of our planet Earth. This epochal transition in the history of mankind is being triggered by three main technological trends. As I mentioned before, ubiquitous sensing, ubiquitous connectivity, and ubiquitous localization and timing. The amount of data that is being collected today in our digital world is enormous and growing constantly, growing at an exponential rate. 99% of these data are digitized, so are already in digital format, and 50% are, are associated with an IP address. And this will uh, grow more and more together with the Internet of Things. In fact, we are facing, uh, through the combination of this enormous amount of data and uh, the uh, availability of ubiquitous sensing, ubiquitous connectivity, and ubiquitous localization and timing, uh, a new mapping, uh, uh, digital mapping, let's say, of our world, or the world around us. Uh, let's have a look at our present uh, digital world in terms of figures. Of course, uh, these are forecasts that are can be partially uh, wrong or partially right, but uh, I think that give a good idea of what is happening around us. In 2020, we expect uh, at least 4 billion people uh, around the Earth being connected, constantly connected to the, to the network, through, through internet, through mo mobile devices, smartphones, and so on. The amount of, uh, uh, the, the, in terms of business, uh, the revenue opportunity, the, the business around uh, this digital world uh, would be in the order of four trillion dollars, uh, an amount of, of money that is uh, almost unbelievable if you think about it. There would be in 2020 more than 25 million new apps, applications, those that we use on our smartphones. Some of them uh, are uh, games, uh, true, but many others are usable and can change our life. I, there will be 25 billion embedded and intelligent systems. So this is another trend in the future, that more and more uh, systems integrate capabilities, computing capabilities and connectivity. So they are elaborating data, processing data, are collecting data, and also they are con constantly connected to the network. 
and the, the amount of data being uh, um, produced will be in the order of 50 trillion gigabytes of data per year. So it's enormous, enormous quantity of data. So let's uh, focus, uh, first of all, to one of the aspects of this revolution that is what I called before ubiquitous sensing, that is in fact deriving from the inner Internet of Things. What is the Internet of Things? The Internet of Things is the, the capability of connecting uh, the equipments and machine, uh, machines around us to the network constantly. So uh, to make it uh, an example very simple, today we have a washing machine at home. Today the, the, the washing machine has got its processor and uh, most of its work is based on software and the software capabilities. But uh, in the near future the washing machine will be connected to internet. It will have its own IP address and it will be uh, exchanging data with the rest of the world, what kind of data. But for instance, the washing machine will tell the manufacturer about problems, so we, you will not have to worry about uh, fixing a problem or about the maintenance of the washing machine, but she will take care of, uh, it will take care of uh, itself by communicating to the manufacturer or to the service company and saying that something is getting uh, close to failure and that some maintenance is required. And uh, other possibilities, will, the same will happen for cars. Uh, maintenance of cars will be completely revolutionized because you will not, today you get the warning from uh, the onboard computer of the car, tomorrow the onboard computer will take care without even warning you, will take care of contacting the service company or the manufacturer and to uh, arrange for you a uh, scheduled maintenance uh, and so on. So uh, this will be applicable to most of, of the machines and uh, equipment that are uh, around us, of course in our everyday life, but also and most important in the industrial environments. So uh, this is the reason why the Internet of Things is uh, creating what it is called uh, a, a industry 4.0, a new approach for, to manufacturing, to production, based on these intelligent machines that can exchange data, can self-maintain uh, themselves and so on. Internet of Things will change, will create new opportunities in all aspects of our life. Uh, we mentioned the automotive uh, field, uh, of course, uh, it will uh, also create uh, new opportunities in terms of elaboration of the big data, the so-called big data, because of all this enormous amount of data that will be collected and made available through the cloud. Uh, it will offer uh, new approaches also for our, uh, let's say, everyday life in our uh, homes and apartments. It will uh, have a big impact, we said, we mentioned, in the industrial organization. It will make possible uh, new approaches for the management, for instance, of traffic. It will make uh, feasible this idea of smart cities, cities that are organized in an intelligent way, making uh, the best use and uh, the most profitable use of all data available. Uh, so, Internet of Things is really uh, changing somehow and providing uh, a sort of uh, enormous and global sensing of uh, the reality around us. So, in the, in the following slides I want to show the evolution of our perception of reality. In the first slide I show as uh, people looked at our world yesterday. So the, the slide shows a map, an ancient map of the 16th century of the city of London. It's very nice, probably worth a lot of money. And you can easily see, the, recognize some features of the city of London. For instance, you see the Tower of London. Uh, you recognize the only bridge that was available at the time, the famous London Bridge. It's a fairly detailed map. There were a lot of details about the buildings, so probably at that time people could, could recognize their own building in the map. But it was very static, so the information there was frozen and it was not very flexible. Today, and this is something very common and known by everybody, 
we have the best representation of the same area of London who come from Google Earth. And so you see in the slide a picture of more or less the same portion of, of London. So you still recognize even better the Tower of London. Now there are several bridges over the Thames. And uh, what is the difference? The difference is that we know very well the Google Earth would be able to provide us uh, much more information. So if we want to, we could get the names of the streets, we could get maybe pictures even of some of the buildings, local pictures of the buildings. So we could make a lot of enrichment of the map. So it is uh, not only more detailed, but it's also richer in terms of information. What is going to be the future? When in the future we will have this enormous explosion of sensors, and we should not forget one thing, that the biggest source of future sensor is us, with all our smartphones. Our smartphones integrate many sensors already. There are temperature sensors, inertial sensors, and maybe in the future they will be even more advanced than the futuristic type of sensors, and we go around and we are ourselves some sort of a moving sensor. If these data are made available and are collected in the cloud, together with many other sensors that are already deployed over and distributed over the territory, uh, we'll, we are going to uh, fill the map with um, an enormous amount of information that if properly processed, can give us a perception of the reality that is unconceivable. Today I can look at the map of London, but tomorrow I'll be able to ask, looking at the Tower of London, what is the smell of the air right now in there? What is the temperature? Can I feel the temperature? Can I know and maybe feel even the temperature that I can experience? What is the smell? What is the sound of the ravens, the famous ravens in the Tower of London? This sounds uh, a bit futuristic, but it is not so, because uh, uh, at the same time there is an enormous explosion of new type of sensors, uh, able to sense uh, really everything, and an enormous explosion of number of sensors available, because again of the Internet of Things. So this uh, is the future uh, augmented reality that we are going to face uh, very soon. Of course, uh, this enormous amount of information has to be supported by a proper communication network. And this is what the uh, next coming 5G technology is looking at. 5G is nothing else than the next wave of mobile communications. We are at the moment in the fourth generation, what we call 4G. The major difference has to do with the fact that so far, all ge previous generations and the present one, 4G, is mainly focused on people, while the next generation of mobile communications will include, because of the Internet of Things, also things. So it will be people and things. Uh, of course, with an increase in terms of data to be transferred, to be communicated, there is also a need for more flexibility in terms of architectures, and also uh, a wider bandwidth, uh, higher data rates. So if we look at the infrastructure, the future, let's say, conceived infrastructure for the 5G technology, we notice, uh, first of all, that uh, the range of frequencies that will be used in the future is going to be expanded enormously, spanning from uh, a few hundred megahertz uh, up to 300 gigahertz, so the use of uh, millimeter and even sub-millimeter frequencies. The architecture in terms of cells will be very varied, from big cells, macro cells, to very small cells or pico cells. So this, uh, the technology will be, the standard will be suitable not just for people, smartphones or whatever, but also for uh, Internet of Things, for communicating, uh, having communication through vehicles, and this may be also in view of uh, autonomous uh, driving uh, and so on. So it's very comprehensive, very complex, very well structured, wide bandwidth, wide range of frequencies. This is what is needed, in fact, to support uh, the Internet of Things and the future type of applications. What is uh, 5G 
going to make feasible many things. We mentioned a possibility of developing smart cities or smart so-called smart applications. So in, in the smart cities to have a smart parking, so a parking system that is able to interact with the user and tell the user where the available slots are, just to make an example to improve the mobility in cities by the so-called smart mobility. Again, the use of data and communication, constant communication with the vehicles to tell them which is the best way to navigate from one point to another. Of course, it will improve a lot the supporting system, for instance, the emergency systems to provide the support in terms of medical assistance or to support the, the police and, and other government type of institutions. It will also improve infrastructure such as the electric power distribution network because this big infrastructure of our society are more and more relying on communications and the exchange of data. So 5G will be pervasive, it's not only a matter of Internet of Things, but it's also a matter of supporting these new services, very advanced services.